All right, we're doing another pod review today. It's going to be on this pod right here, and this is called the White Boot Chalokia. The White Boot Chalokia. I had shot a video earlier in the season, and I called it the White Habanero, and that was a mistake. So to try to fix that would have been too much work, and so I do have some more of these pods left, so I figured why not just reshoot the video. That's what we're doing now. Um, as you can see, it's cold. It's nasty. It's about the middle of November, but it's not that cold for the middle of November. And so, anyway, there it is. Now, a little bit about this pod. Uh, you will see a couple of different variations of the White Boot Jalokia online. A lot of times you'll see them where they're longer, wider, with a, more of a tail on it. And then you'll see the shorter type that are sh more shorter and blockier. And they are indeed a white boot jalokia. It's just they're two different kind of phenos that are coming out of these white boot jalokias. One is being sold like this, and one is being sold like a longer version of the white boot jalokia with sort of like almost like a tail on it. This is for the shorter type version, and this is indeed again a white boot jalokia. I went did a lot of research on this pepper and. I was checking it out, and yes, this is a white boot jalokia, but there is another type of white boot jalokia out there that is a little bit longer. I know I'm repeating myself, but got to make sure I'm clear on that uh, subject matter. So anyway, here it is. It's the shorter white boot jalokia. We're just going to call it the boot jalokia white. That's it. Let's give it a bite. Nice flavor. It's got a nice flavor. There was a little bit of tanginess to this particular pepper, but that could be because, number one, it's been sitting out for about three weeks on the plate, and number two, it is late in the year, so maybe the flavors are a little bit awkward. But there was some tanginess associated with this. The heat is starting to come in now. It's definitely starting to feel like the heat of a boot. It's definitely not a, the heat of a habanero. Totally different effect. The heat from a boot is a very raw, striking, rough type of burn. It's a real rough, it's nowhere near what a habanero is. Though I have eaten some habaneros that can be quite tough. I've eaten the, the mustard habanero, and I've eaten smaller ones that didn't do anything, but when you dry those out, the heat is absolutely enormous on those. But anyway, that's what it looks like on the inside. I'm going to get you to focus. That's it right there. It's a nice little pepper. The heat is, for me, in my opinion, with these particular pods, the heat's in there. It's not as strong and striking as a red Buccalokia. It's not as strong. It's definitely more mild as far as the intensity of the heat. That's my opinion on it. If I was to place a number on the, on the heat, I'll tell you where it's affecting in a second. If I was to place a number on this particular one, I wouldn't go over 500,000. I wouldn't even touch that. I, I'm almost reluctant to say 500. It's a little lower than that, even. It's not as nowhere as near the heat of an, a Buccalokia from India. Now, those peppers, <laughs> those Indians are crazy. They eat those things like they're going like they're popcorns. These are much lighter. The, the burn is intense. It's still a wicked burn, and it's very road rashy. But the effect seems to be lighter in general. It just doesn't seem to have that same type of intensity as the red ones. Definitely not as, as potent, in my opinion. Now, the way it's striking my tongue, where I chewed it on this side of the mouth, everything is numb. Not numb numb, but like burnt numb type of feeling. Even the teeth even feel like the, the roots inside my teeth almost feel like they got hit with Novocaine. Just numbed the side of my mouth. It literally right to the where my my it feels like oh, I got a slight dose of you know lanacaine or, or novocaine or something. Uh, the burn is pretty intense on this side of the mouth. Goes around to the tongue. I'm gonna take another bite and see if we can if it's gonna affect everything around my mouth because it's just concentrated where I chewed it. Really, that's it, and it concentrated to the point where it actually numbed the teeth a little bit. So let me take another bite and uh, let's get this moved around my mouth. Chewing it on this side now. 
let that heat build a little bit and then we'll we'll move into the uh, flavor okay so the flavor of it was generally pretty nice it has not necessarily a peachy flavor but just like a type of peachy fruitiness very light in flavor it's low spicy low spicy meaning the aftertaste isn't going to hang around for hours and hours just came in did its thing and it's gone it, the flavor comes and goes it's not a long lasting nasty hang in the back of your tongue type of fruitiness that just eventually starts to nauseate you this was nice and light it came did its thing and it's gone it had a nice light type of vanilla type of peachy fruity light fruity flavor it's just really strange and very elegant type of flavor very delicate and elegant that's the way i would describe the flavor on this particular variety of pepper it's definitely not the same as the red boots the red boots are just rough and nasty all the way around now chew that one the heat's about the same i i again i i wouldn't put it much higher than in this particular one 400 to 450 which isn't bad, I mean, for a Buccioloquia, but it's low for the Buccioloquia range. It's generally, Buccioloquias are usually much hotter than that. But I, I'm not even sure of the Buccioloquia range, but this is like around what I said. It's pretty even. The sting is there. It's got a striking type of a sting, but it's short-lived. The flavor, again, it comes, does its thing, and it's short-lived. This is a very nice pepper for straight-up salads. If you're going to eat a salad and you want something with a little kick in it with a nice little sweet overtone flavor and you want it, want it to come and go with the flavor of the salad, you don't want it hanging around hours after you eat it, this would be something that would be nice to be eaten fresh. It's a very nice, delicious type of uh, tasting pepper. And also, too, just so you know, I've been drying these peppers out um, and I've been sampling them dry. The flavors of these are I, I mean, I can't even really compare them to eating them fresh. I like the dried flavors so much more better. They have just a more, I don't know how to say it. It's just a better taste to me when they're dried. So that's what I've been doing lately is been drying them and sampling them and eating them dry. And the heat stays the same with them. But the dryness, it, it I don't know, it, it seems like it infuses the flavors in such a way where it, it they they just taste good. I eat them like potato chips now. I dry them out in halves. I dry those halves out and I stick them into a cheddar cheese, hot cheddar cheese type of, uh, you know, dip. And I just eat, instead of potato chips and dip, I just dip the peppers dried in there. It's just like eating potato chips. And they're good. They're hot and they're good. And they're really, I really like that. I got to maybe do a video on that. But anyway, I don't know what else to say about the white Buccalochia except the fact that this is the short one and not the long one. And so what stands out about this pepper the most is the, the funny white color it gets. When you put these in the sun, they looks like they get sun scalded, but they're not sun scalded. It's actually the color of the pepper. It actually turns white from the sun. And the sun, it's like some peppers will turn black when you put them in the sun. These turn white when you put them in the sun. That, that direct exposure really whitens them a lot. So that's what you would want to do if you really want to get them white and less bone color. Stick them directly in the sun. It'll bleach those things white. They look really cool. So that, that's one of the features that really stands out about it. The other feature is it's a short buccalokia. It's not your typical long buccalokia, though... These can get a little bigger than what you've seen as far as lengthwise. They get a little longer. Sometimes they're smooth skin. A lot of times they get warty. So they have a, a wide range of effects on the pepper. They sometimes almost look like habaneros. And they're not habaneros. So they're, they almost can look like that, but they're, they're buccalokis for sure. You can tell by the burn by itself and the taste as well. It's got that kind of a boot type flavor to it just with a lot of different peachy and lighter fruit overtones with it but anyway that's it that's your pod review on a white buccalokia don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one take care